Today is February 4th, 2017, and a couple days ago, ESXi 6.5.0a was released, actually while I was in the air, and uh, the tweets started going out. Now, release notes, all that was easy to find. What wasn't so easy to find was, hey, what's the command actually do it? So this article gets into that. I'm going to upgrade this host on the left, which was at 6.5, the initial build, 4.56.4.1.0.6, which uh, if we look at the DCUI, the local interface looks like that. Okay familiar with the local console, the local video output of the machine. Um, there's the build number. And I'm going to take it up to 650A today, right, during this quick and hopefully concise video. There are prerequisites covered here. Uh, it's going to use the internet, so we did a, got to do a firewall rule change. We want to allow that. Um, but we don't have to log into my VMware or find the ISO or any of that, so that's the nice thing here. So I would encourage you to read all these article prerequisite steps, including uh, backing up first, making sure you have SSH open and all that. Okay, let's get right to the upgrade here. Open SSH access. So I'm on a PC, so I'm using PuTTY. You can use whatever SSH client you want. Okay, we're in. I'm gonna make it nice and wide so you can see the whole session without missing anything. All right, turn on maintenance mode. Well, in my case, I have no other VMs going. So I'm ready to proceed with step three. Triple click right here, gets the whole sentence uh, highlighted so I can right click and copy. And then right click and paste. Notice it hit enter for me. It executes the command. It's a little bit annoying, but that's how putty works. All right, next, item four. Triple click, right click, copy, right click, paste. This is the one where we simply wait. You're not going to see much. I admit this. Wait time depends on the speed of the ASXI's connection to the internet and a little bit on the speed of the uh, media that we're on. So in my case, it's a USB uh, flash drive. So it's going to take a little while. Um, and when it's done, we can close the firewall back up again and, and reboot. So that's basically it. Uh, it really is that simple. Now, a whole lot of text stuff is going to show up. So I'm going to go ahead and resize this and then I'll resume the video when there's actually some progress to show you because there's not a whole lot to look at while we wait for it to complete. Whoa, that was fast. Uh, I did not speed up the video. It finished in under a minute. And we've got another command to do. Triple click. Right click, copy, right click, paste, firewall done. And the last command is literally the word reboot. Now for screenshot and for article purposes, it's gonna be handy for me to go ahead and grab a transcript of everything that happened here. So that's all now on my clipboard and paste it in. And notice, uh, there's no scroll buffer. You didn't miss a step here. That's it. I'm going to hit reboot or hit enter after typing in reboot. And now the host is rebooting. So it really is that simple to upgrade your ESXi 6.5 to ESXi 6.5.0a. Soon we're going to see this go away. There you go. It's rebooting the host. That's normal stuff. System halted. Now the bias boot screen comes up. And Putty, of course, is whining that I've closed the connection. So that's it. That's how you upgrade your host. After you're done, you might want to take uh, a moment to log in and make sure everything looks good. I've got screenshots for you here, uh, what it looks like afterward. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause this video and make sure I'm able to log in and confirm that indeed it shows 48873. Seven zero. Once the reboot process is complete, naturally it's going to take a little while. So stand by while we wait for this machine to finish the reboot process. I'll speed it up starting now.
Okay, we're back. And hit F5. And get it to reauthenticate. And there it is, 488-7370, upgrade, success. Same thing showing here, build number. So we're back in action. Um, again, I encourage you to read all the details of the article that I kind of skimmed over, including you may have issues if you have, say, a home lab with real tech drivers. So you may need to deal with those after this upgrade. Okay, so that's it. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching. And thanks for visiting tinkertry.com.